Hello guys. Today one of my past clients contacted me and asked for help. I consulted them with building their own website. Um, here it is. Let me show you quickly. It's a simple static website. By the way, it's not an advertisement in any kind. This website teaches you how to play a game called Scraps and it's not online casino or something. But this game you can play in a real casino. So uh, the client actually teaches how to play this game and they work in the casino. So uh, since they know a lot about it, they decided to build it. So uh, it's quite nice resource by itself, but we are going to discuss its technical side today and how to make it better. It's built basically with static HTML, CSS and a little bit of JavaScript and mostly it's informational website. You can build such uh, a website with WordPress or Wix these days, but the client wanted to build it uh, themselves, like to learn some of, of web development and also to express their knowledge of the game and to make it a little bit fun, not like, you know, uh, a business where you develop something quickly. They wanted to understand how websites are built. And uh, you can see here there are a lot of pages with like information, what are the rules of the game, what are the best strategies of winning the game, and so on. And uh, well, it, it's been quite a plenty of work to, to build it. And uh, they actually made iterations of this website. I think this is version 3 or something. Each time they build a new version, it was better than previous. And I realized it might be a <laughs> time to build a fourth version. So uh, let's quickly overview what are the functionalities of the website. On the top we see header with main menu. Uh, we can see the uh, section of the website with the information of the rules. Practice, it's like tips and tricks and you can download some PDFs like uh, cheat sheets and a simulator, which is a working implementation of the game that let you, you know, uh, put money, virtual money, nothing real, and uh, play it and, uh, well, learn along the way. If we look at the code of it, you'll see that in the sources section, there is a Krebs simulator, uh, .ts file, here it is, and it has tremendous 10,000 of line, lines. And I realized a lot of this code is repeating itself, and a lot of this code is per JavaScript, managing buttons state, like if you do uh, click on this button, this button should become disabled, and it's very imperative code as uh, what I would call. And the problem with imperative code is it quickly can become out of control because if you have a lot of moving parts, it's easy to forget something like this button should be disabled, oh, and so on. Uh, but also like if we scroll to the upper part of this file where repeating code stops, this is one of the things to solve. Uh, but also other things to solve that are not such uh, repeating as a regular functionality of the game. So it's basically an application at this stage. You can see it's not a static website anymore. So uh, on your websites, you can have some static parts of it and also some interactive parts. So in this case, this Krebs uh, section is completely static. You just read some pictures, etc. In practice, you again read or download something. Uh, a little bit of JavaScript is involved to do subscribing or maybe downloads, depending on if you are signed up or signed in or not. Uh, but the simulator is completely interactive. So I decided why not we 
build a smaller version of this website today, like in an hour or so, maybe under an hour, ideally, um, just to give an idea of how I would build it in 2023. So what we should start is some framework that allows you to build uh, all the pages, compile them, I mean, on the build stage. So they are available for search engine optimization, which is important because it's informational website. So one of such tools, and the one that is my favorite at the moment, is SwelteKit. So SwelteKit is a, a meta framework on top of Swelt framework, and it allows you to build fast and also enjoy at the same time. So let's start from scratch and you'll see it quickly. I'll open a new uh, VS Code uh, window and uh, let's, uh, I think, make a new folder. Yeah. I think I'll do it for the terminal. So I need to go to the folder with the source code where it usually is. So in my case, it's freelance. And this website called Parlor Nation. So I'll call it Parlor Nation 12. Oh yeah, it doesn't exist yet. So let's create it. Okay, then we go there. And here we can just save code to open it. Okay, nice. So we have nothing, so we'll start from scratch. Let's execute these instructions one by one. Yeah, it might create a new folder, <laughs> but we'll see. Maybe I can say this folder. So let's go. It will install create swell. This is a small application that um, scaffolds the structure for you. And it asks you a few questions to let you configure SwellKit as you want. So how you would like to create the project. I want to use current directory. I want to use skeleton project, which means empty SwellKit project, no demo app, and it's not a library. Would I like to use TypeScript? Yes, 100%. Uh, one of the problem with this uh, simulator thing, it was developed with JavaScript and a lot of runtime errors appears. So TypeScript would definitely um, cut off a lot of such errors on the build stage. Would I like Heslin, Prettier? Yes. Playwright and uh, Vtest might be a little bit excessive for beginners. So let's avoid it. But ESLint will highlight errors in your code before you deploy it. And Prettier will format it so it looks nicely. Okay. So your project is ready. Some instructions of how to use ESLint, Prettier, etc. And uh, installation steps for dependencies. What I recommend to do is to install globally pnpm. So you would run it like this, npm install g pnpm. For me latest is because I updated it recently. So what it does, it installs a re drop-in replacement for npm, but it's much faster. So let me show you. You just run pnpm i like you would do with npm and it, it will do the same thing, install all the dependencies, but it will do it quick. Also, if you have uh, multiple projects on your computer and you install same dependencies for multiple projects, it utilizes um, links for files. So instead of downloading same files again and again or copying them for the file system, it makes virtual links. So installation process is much faster. Okay, so this was done in five seconds. 
let's look at the structure of the folder now. So we have some configuration for ESLint for Prettier. Uh, we have package JSON with dependencies and some scripts to run, to build, to lint, to format. Uh, we won't cover this section much. It's mostly stuff related to dev dependencies and not to real production dependencies. The only interesting part is Svelte itself. Okay, then pnpm log file is a log file for dependencies to make sure the versions are the same. Readme, uh, Svelte config, we might put additional stuff into here, but right now it's not that important. TS config for TypeScript, and it's strict from the start, so you will have to use best practices, and uh, as a result, do less uh, bugs in your code, which is good. And Vit, Vit is a tool that bundles your code. It has Svelte Kit as a plugin. You don't know, need to know Vit, and you don't need to know Svelte Kit configuration much, because Svelte Kit is mostly just HTML and JavaScript. I'll show you in a second. So you completely ignore this dot Svelte Kit folder. It's like runtime builded code and you don't need to look at it, just don't waste your time. Node modules, you probably know what that is, put some dependencies for your project. Then static is some static resources like images or other icons or stuff you want to be deployed as is. And the most interesting is source. So first is app HTML. This is an entry point of your project. You can see some of SvelteKit stuff, like head and body sections. This is where SvelteKit will inject its head and body, basically. And we have a roots folder. Right now it has only one file, plus page.svelte, and it's basically the root of the website. So let's run it quickly, and you'll see what it has. So we have a common dev. It's in packet JSON here. It runs fit dev. And uh, well, we'll have our local version, local environment for development. Okay, and here we are. Right now, this is a skeleton, just like we scaffolded it. Uh, I'll put it on the right of the screen and this on the left. So we can see changes as we go. And terminal, you can make it really small. Sometimes you can see useful errors here, like uh, build errors, Svelte related. So it makes sense to leave it a little bit open like this. Okay, so let's make just a few quick changes here to see if it is interactive. So I will say hello world here, save it, and it's immediately refreshed on the right. Cool. So let's look what we need to build. You can, by the way, if you are just learning Svelte Kit, I highly recommend you to go straight to tutorial. There it is. Let me make it bigger. Tutorial, tutorial, tutorial. It should be on the home page. Hey, this is the most important part and the funniest part. Well, it should be, ah, here, sorry. So in the on the first page of the documentation, you can see interactive tutorial. So if you know nothing about Svelte and Svelte Kit, you can just go here. It guides you through Svelte stuff. Uh, it's separated into four pieces. Welcome to Svelte, we are here now. Introduction into Svelte Kit, the meta framework part of it and advanced uh, pieces for, for it. Uh, and the way you can uh, utilize this tutorial is by reading instructions on the left, apply them on the right, and check it out if it works. So this is um, welcome and basic information, nothing interactive here, but next, 
is actually some practice. So you can see basic Svelte component is HTML. So hello world and it is rendered here. If you want to add some interactivity part, our copy paste is disabled. Okay, let's enable it for purposes of this video. So we copy this, we paste it here and we have this variable name that we can immediately display in our HTML like this, wrapping it with a curly brackets. And you can see, you can, well, use template engine of Svelte like this. And not just, just pieces of text, but also attributes. So let's go to the next uh, page of the tutorial. And here you can see, you can also apply variables to attributes like image source. I'll quick, uh, quickly do it here. So we need to put this and you can see source is applied. This is image.gif. Okay, I will leave you to play with it yourself. I don't want to spend too much time here, but SwellKit is quite easy to navigate. Like this is how you apply on click uh, handlers and uh, there are some uh, logic like if else statements. This is how you do it. You can wrap pieces of code with if conditions. You can do each blocks, which is uh, for each uh, loops. Like you have array of colors and you can iterate over it. And for each color in the array, you want to display a button. So just like this. Okay, so I'll close it for now, but we might uh, come to it while we are developing. So first of all, on the website, oh, I think in this, uh, on this width, I saw mobile version of it, and this is desktop version of it. Uh, let me try to arrange it so it has bad, best view for you might be i can just zoom out let's see yeah it would be better like the the actual website is smaller but we have more space for our code cool so we have header let's start with that header will appear on all the pages and we have special place for it we can create plus layout.svelte and you can see it is located in the root of roads folder so it means it will be on each page of the app so let's quickly create some header and um, my app home about yeah that's fine that's fine cool let's see so it is immediately injected into our code you see, we never mentioned it anywhere, but because we follow this plus layout, syn uh, not syntax, file name format, it is applied. Also like plus page is for pages and you will see how routing is built in a second. So we have home and about page. Home is home and we are here and it should say hello world. The reason why it doesn't say is because we don't have slot section. So slot is a placeholder for the main page content. So, okay, this is how we get the page content. Uh, what about about? So we can see we tried to access it, but we got 404 error not found. And we see not found error in the terminal here. This is because we don't have it yet. So let's create it quickly. You just need to create about folder and inside plus page dot svelte again. And you can see error is gone. And let's say this is about page. Yep. So this is quickly navigation done with header and different 
uh, bodies for pages. So let's look. Grabs, practice, sign in, sign up. Sometimes I call it scraps. Sorry, it might be not correct. So when we click on grabs, we actually see simulator visible. For simplicity, I want to make simulator always be visible. So let's make it here. So it's uh, grabs. Uh, practice and simulator okay we won't integrate sign in sign up because the thing we are building now is more static website but it's not hard to do I just don't want to uh, make the scope of this video too big so grabs uh, practice and simulator okay also click on the logo leads to the home page so let's make sure this is also respected also you can see Svelte makes you a better developer by showing you some errors in the code like here it says, this is not a valid uh, href attribute value. So we need to put at least slash, which is go to the root. And here let's uh, call it parlay nation. I won't do a lot of styling in this video, but I'll show you how to integrate Tailwind CSS into it so you can make styles much better. Okay, so this is logo, grabs, practice simulator, and back to home page by clicking on logo. Nice. So we don't have about. Let's rename it to grabs. Also, we have uh, practice. And we have simulator. That will be the base of our website I'll just copy this plus page here and there so grabs practice and simulator okay let's see if it works practice simulator home page wonderful okay so we also have this footer on each page and let's copy this copyright symbol and make footer at least exist so footer here the year is 2023 and we have footer on each page now nice okay so let's address this sidebar now on the left so it's basically sub pages but on the original website they are done as uh, their own pages not slash crap slash max odds but actually just max odds it's possible to do both in Svelte uh, let me show you how to do uh, first and second way so first way if we want it to be slash crabs slash max odds just say max odds folder here we copy plus page max odds okay the page is ready we now need to make uh, it's a sidebar so let's use a side tag max odds simulator practice Okay, max odds is the one we need right now. Okay. So let's see how it works. We are on Krebs page. We have navigation. I think it's time to add a little bit of CSS because it's hard to figure out where is 
uh, header, where is footer, where is navigation of this page or sidebar. Uh, but when we click on max odds, you can see it's craps slash max odds. Uh, so this is the first way how you can do it with additional slash craps. If you'd prefer it to just be max odds, it's also possible. We just need to wrap craps in round brackets and let me fix it in a second. So we remove this, leaving it by just max odds. And uh, max odds. Let's go to the home page. Yeah, so Swell basically tells us this round brackets is you have a folder scraps, but it stops being part of the URL of the path. But also we have just root pages that also have some content and it's kind of, well, you need to have something. Um, otherwise they will conflict. Yeah. Let me see, maybe I can just rename it. Let's put A in the beginning. So it's not a plus page anymore. We could click grabs that is not found. But if we go to max odds, it is here. Even if it is inside Craps folder. Okay, but the Craps folder is gone now. There's this this page. It's possibly to do it as well. I'm sure, but uh, I kind of forgot how to do it. So let's skip it for now. Okay, so I will return this plus page as it was, and I want Craps to actually be part of URL so this is more clear way of doing it I think Crabs. yeah okay good so how would you add styles you can always of course add something like uh, style here as you used to or classes and that will work and you can add style and decide some classes like sidebar let's say okay we also need to make the whole thing inside a container this is just example of how you can do it with uh, just regular classes and this is the oh it's actually should be called main so main tag goes in pair with a side tag and this is like the main content of the page grabs content okay let's see we need to define container class and now navigation is on the left and content is on the right I want some gap so we have some gap also sidebar I want to have some background color maybe gray so now you can distinguish them between. But this is not very nice. And I want something more advanced than old way of defining classes and have a mess of it. So for that we can use Tailwind. So Tailwind is a CSS framework or a library where you write classes, but these are specialized classes and they have short syntax and they basically in uh, insert CSS into your code but only necessary part so you can see this demo shows you 
how you can modify uh, the style of this uh, section by applying classes and conditionally to like medium size screens or smaller size screens or bigger size screens so they have swelled instruction how to add it so first you uh, initiate the swelled part itself then you install these dependencies so let's do it at the same time however it is let's put it on the side okay pmpmi copy the rest it will install it in a second then this will initiate it i just add p in in front of npx so it's pnpx tailwind css that will create a uh, tailwind config js and post css config js these are two files that help you configure tailwind if you need to like different uh, styling or schemas uh, how dark should look like how a light should look like etc and customize it so then they say go to swell config js and make sure that this white preprocess is there i think it's there by default these days yep it is here and here so we don't need to do anything and then in the tailwind config we need to define what files it will check for for tailwind classes oops so this is an array so you can define more than just one uh, regex so this say in the source folder which is here everything like any nesting and all the files with extensions html javascript swelled and typescript this is where it will look for typescript classes actually we will have only swelled files but let's leave it as it is also we need to create app css in the root of the source folder and paste this stuff okay and also in layout we need to import it i think that will be it yeah we need script section and import okay let's see so no errors ah wait i stopped the execution let's run it again no errors good sign and you can see uh, tailwind first of all removed any default browser styles like all the paddings that were there before they all gone uh, and now we can style our elements as we want so this is one thing let's play with poor tailwind first if you never used it i recommend you to go through documentation uh, but basically it works like this you want uh, for example sidebar to have specific width you search for it here and you have multiple options how big your uh, element should be let's say i want it to be w32 which is w32 8 ram or 128 pixels actually this is quite a small one maybe 32 oh sorry 52 so let's try where is our side so instead of saying uh, sidebar and put in all these styles let's remove all of that and look at it let me make it here again okay and if we inspect it 
the side you can see it has width of exactly 208 pixels that's what we need uh, but we need to style uh, the container to be a flex box for that we have flex and just flex is actually enough this is for container so let's put it here and you can see it's immediately a row of two elements okay also I want background to be grayish so let's look for background color background 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 color and here it is and there are plenty of options for your background like shades of green red blue and colors that boys usually don't call and don't know so uh, let's find a shade of gray uh, there is a slate color that I like so something like slate 400 would work here so in addition to our W52 for a side let's add it and here it is okay also I want to separate header and footer with their own colors by the way I'm not a designer I'm a developer so my designs are crap and uh, please don't don't do it if you have a designer in your team they will utilize it much better but for teaching and learning that will be more than enough okay so where is our uh, header here let's edit the class so I want it to have fixed high and for that we can use high again same thing as with width width I pronounce it weird every time let's use something like 28 okay it got extra space maybe even too big 16 yep 16 is better also I want it also to be flex and roll because we have logo here and then menu so and for logo I want it to have some margin right so if you want to use some margin right or margin top or padding top right etc you just say MR stands for margin right and then you have values like one two three four five etc so let's try two here okay maybe not enough five much better also for the whole header I want uh, it to have some padding so vertical padding would be padding Y like I axis Y axis would be three five yeah five is better and horizontal one should be bigger like eight or twelve yeah eight is fine okay cool and here for our menu items I want them to be again as a row and the gap maybe three or maybe five yeah and also maybe underline because they are links so it's easier to distinguish that they are links okay also for the whole header I want border to be presented if you just add border it will add one pixel border from all sides I want border to be only on the bottom so let's quickly search for it border 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 width maybe border border top border right border border bottom so just border B okay I don't need to copy that I can handle it okay so 
left top and right border is gone and we only have this uh, line on the bottom which is nice and let's add a little bit of background color and also shade okay let's start with shade or shadow um, there are again multiple sizes medium large XL to XL let's start with large yeah I barely see it maybe to XL I don't see it maybe there is one additional like drop shadow itself that we need to add no they just use it with size so fix and that's enough for them maybe we need to define some color yeah what color is it uh, it has some um, transparentish colors maybe yeah so let's add some background color first background color maybe darker ones it de this depends on the style of the website so here it has black so we, we actually have just bg black yeah and also text should be white yeah this is better okay so I'm sure you can do better CSS than me so I will leave it as it is now this is more than fine for this video purpose let's style uh, sidebar a little bit let's remove this scraps paragraph okay and uh, I think I also want body to have some colors that is not white so here they have like darkish color not black but pretty dark one maybe sync 800 so we can go to directly to body and add a class here just like we can do in any swell file yep okay and let's add text white by default so all our text is visible again the thing that makes us to be able to remove text white from here to avoid duplication and might be border so border now is not needed and shadow yeah I'm bad with shadows uh, but we definitely need to add some margin bottom so margin bottom 8 let it be okay nice uh, okay but sidebar should be all the way to the top so maybe not margin bottom here but inside the sidebar so sidebar here should have padding bottom oh no it's actually padding top let it be five yep what color we have here for the background blue 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 maybe this one Yeah, something now darker darker can we find darker one please so sometimes you cannot find the color you want and it's okay you can define it always just here in app CSS so let's define class BG uh, deep blue I'd call it okay like that or we can even take original colors and we need to start using it
okay. That would work. Maybe not exactly one to one, but this is fine. Okay, also navigation should have some general padding, like from left and right and maybe bottom. So let's just make it global padding, five. Okay. Also, it should stretch all the way to the bottom. Um, but depend on our content. Maybe we can set it minimum high. So mean height. Uh -huh. So there are not so many options. Like one that can work is mean age screen that will take a screen size. Okay. And you can see, depending on our screen, it takes all the height and the footer is on the bottom. So this is fine because usually content is quite long itself and we need some scroll. So that will do for our case now. And maybe as a final step here, let's style a little bit of the footer, just a bit. I think CSS part of this video is already too long. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. footer class part putting maybe 12 okay and uh, background black just like header okay yeah that's basically out here So we can define all the sidebar links like this. I will define just two for demo purposes. Max odds and let's say the dice. Mm -hmm. Okay, you see it's a lot of text here. I, I, I don't want to style all of that or go through that, it's just HTML, so let's copy pieces of it, and that will work for demo purposes, so it's there, oh, sorry, there, dice, and inside we have uh, plus page dot swelled. Okay, so this is header, like h1 probably, and the rest are paragraphs, first paragraph, and the second one. Okay, let's see if it works. We don't need the word navigation, it feels ex extra, so max odds back the dice here we are okay so you can notice that once we click on the link on the craps page the sidebar is gone the reason is because it is defined right now uh, just in the page of craps if we want it to be uh, as a part of layout always in inner pages we can again utilize plus layout Feature of Svelte Kit, Layout, Svelte, and put this part of the code there. So where crops content sits, we'll say slot. Okay, basically that's the whole layout here. And the crap page itself, let's see what it is original. It's some um, guide. Like you can click next and previous, etc. etc. Okay, I'll quickly add some paragraphs. Usually you'd like to define some classes for them or uh, like, you know, 
basic classes like every time you use paragraph on such page it should be this style uh, or define a class like uh, I know article paragraph AP or something okay so the layout is now uh, applied to all the pages max odds and the dice uh, but because the dice have a lot of text on it a sidebar is uh, shrinked let's fix that quickly so where it is it's here flex huh. so we define fixed width doesn't matter what but it shrinks in any case and the reason is because we're using flex here so flex controls the width not the width parameter so you can see if we disable it or enable it it doesn't do much what we can do actually is we can say flex one or grow one yeah i think it's grow one grow is a flex property that let you say hey this element this flex child should be able to grow and should not shrink so uh, let me just check it for a second flex one flex auto okay so this properties here says for this class this css will be applied and first number here is a grow value like grow one just like we wrote second is a shrink value should it shrink or not and the third one is the base uh, size for it and there are different variation for it so let's find the proper for our case what about grow flex grow ah, I just grow okay so it should grow but it should not shrink flex shrink shrink zero okay nice now we have default width set it does not shrink but it grows <laughs> okay might be it should not grow okay now it's stable nice so it just should not shrink also for the slot for this main section let's apply some basic padding like maybe eight okay this is much better so we got two pages here and the parent crabs nested max odds and nested the dice so this is how you would do the static part of SwellKit of your website let's go to simulator I guess because practice is very similar thing uh, to crabs so and simulator is some interactive part I'll need to think of what interactivity we will do so yeah practice let's leave it like this simulator so on the original website it's a whole game implemented here and uh, implementing a whole game from scratch without me knowing the rules of the game would take a while so let's make something javascript related with Svelte framework uh, integrated something that would help you build something similar to that like some basis for it so simulator will sit here so what we have here are some buttons so button like bat and we can define on click and a bat function that we need to this um, declare so we just need script section and function bat 
and it will just console log something. Okay, let's see if it works. Uh, so the button is not styled. Let's add some basic classes. Uh, maybe pad in, pad in vertical three, pad in horizontal six, border. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's fine. This looks a little bit like button now. Actually, it might be a good idea to utilize something like Daisy UI. So Daisy UI is a component library based on Svelte, uh, sorry, on Tailwind. It's not specifically for Svelte. You can use it with React or Angular or Vue, whatever you prefer. Uh, but you can use some existing components build on top of that. So let's look. For example, I struggled to make a button. You can go here, find the button. There are a lot of modifications. You can find it familiar and similar to Bootstrap, but you can still use Tailwind with that. So variety of buttons here. And uh, we can use all of them, any of them together with Tailwind. Let me show you how to install it if you decide to use it. So you just install it as a dependency in PMI, Daisy UI. I think it's, yeah, it's dependency, uh, de development dependency. So let's add D. Let's see if it correctly moved to dev dependencies. Yes. It is here. Now, how do we use it? We add it as a plugin in Tailwind config.js. Here we have plugins. Okay, and that's it. There are some additional examples for different frameworks, like here is one for Svelte, uh, but it, you'll see it's pretty simple and you don't need to do anything basically he just says button class button okay so let's see if our button will be styled now if we add uh, oh wait this is wrong one here so if we add uh, where is our button i'm lost let's close everything that is not related to what we're doing right now Close others. Okay, so here instead of defining these classes ourselves, let's just say button, and we need to start our pnpm dev. Okay, we can see it immediately became a styled button. Also, our background changed a little bit because Daisy UI is a dark theme by default, uh, but this is fine. So I only want the simulator to have minimum high, so we don't see this background color. So we should say mean age screen. Okay, nice, so we now have some space. Also, also, we need some padding. So on this page, we had sidebar that sits without any paddings from the left or right. But on this page, we don't have any sidebar. So I want it to have some padding, let's say 12. 12 is more than enough. Okay, and simulator have some margin bottom five and we have a bad button so we stopped with defining this bad function let's try to click it and you can see it works and it logs bad here so this is how simple it is to attach uh, click handlers and other types of handlers in Svelte 
You don't need to look for a button with a plain JavaScript by its ID or something. Uh, also, let's show how uh, we can utilize if statements in Svelte. So this is how you start. And after it, you should provide it some variable. Like is bad visible. So we don't have it yet. Let's make it false. Uh huh. You should say let. Okay, so it is not visible. Let's make it visible in a second. Oh, three seconds. Let's make it one. So it got visible after we refresh page and wait one second. So these are reactive statement. It will automatically add this button once the variable changed. And uh, this is much better than us, uh, trying to access button by ID, find it on the page. If you found it or it is not yet there and you got an error, you just define it in declarative way instead of imperative way. Okay, uh, so let's think what type of interactivity we need to add to our app so we cover most of cases for development on such game so we have some balance here on the left let's add that so aside uh, lex this will be container Aside main in a side will have balance and balance that will be our virtual balance and we can define and we should define it here. Let's say we have hundred bucks. Okay, every time we bet, let's uh, subtract. five from it okay we click and you see value changes and you don't need to find this aside element again you, you just make it work okay let's go and put the button inside main and now it is here let's set some gap oops Cap five, let's make button visible from the start for now. Okay, uh, what else? There are some game engine involved in to building such thing. And there are a lot of moving parts. I think right now there is a problem because it is written in JavaScript and it has some um, issues with how it is written this is to be addressed but uh, let's write simulator in few components I will show you how components can work together to form some functionality and I will roll some dices so I will start writing here few components work together then roll dices show results uh, place bets if uh, check results uh, check if one yep update balance nice okay that will be minimal game here uh, this is not related to actual crafts game, uh, but some small game like, uh, let's say we place bet if dices, if we think dices will be bigger than six both. No, sorry, 
6 is maximum bigger than 4. Okay, so we can do swell components just in the folder here. So one comp not file, it should be file. So one component will be balance swelled. So it will display balance. Another component will be dices and their state. Dices swelled. Then results and game itself. Uh, let's say game swelled. Game. Okay. So these components should be should share some data between each other. And there are multiple ways of how to do it on, in Svelte. I think I will show the only one you actually need. It's medium complexity way, uh, but it can scale uh, to really big, big functionalities. It's called stores. And uh, I will show you it in a second. Let's just define store.cs file here. This is where I will place the game logic. Okay, so we have balance. We have dices that will roll. And uh, we will check if like the, the bet won or not. So in the store, since it's for TypeScript code, not related to view, it will be just game engine logic. So let's say, first of all, we need the store itself. So let's say const store. There is writable imported from Swell store. It's a function that creates our store. And let's use TypeScript straight from the beginning to utilize best practices. So writable takes uh, one parameter, its initial value. Let's define initial value here. Uh, let's make it an object. And also writable is typed like, like this. So we need to make interface for our store. So store contains state of the game inside. So interface will be named state. So it will have balance of number. It will have dice one value, dice two value, and uh, bet. Yeah, bet. Okay, so balance is current balance. Uh, dice values can be undefined, but let's say if dice's values are not defined yet, it's just zero. Uh, if they are defined, it's from one to six. And bet is how much you bet it. So let's say you click bet button once, you added five dollars to your bet. If you click twice, it's ten dollars. So and so on. So initial value should be of this type state. So we need to define balance, dice one, dice two, and bet. This is our initial values for new game. Here we type writable with state and we provide it with initial value. Okay, this is our store. What we can do with store is we can export for, uh, export it as it is, but the better way is to export some constant. We'll call it game store, and it will have a uh, few public functions. So we won't export the whole store itself, we'll just export public interface. You can think about it as a sub program of your website. So first of all, we need to export subscribe function. It's a function of the store itself that let you to uh, link it in your HTML and display values like display balance, display amount of bet. 
uh, okay that was subscribe reset if you want to start game from scratch uh, roll okay yeah roll we will we'll need roll but let's start with bad I think bad is more important to figure out the right order so bad amount we'll always set it to five I think in the code later but yeah it can take some parameter so the bad function let's define its borders uh, inside what it should do let's write what it should do so it increases the bad by the amount yep uh, well that, that's basically all it does now so store update it will take state and it will increase bad by the amount and we should return state so store value is updated this is how you update the store basically uh, here in reset you can see store also has set function it will take not a function like update here but a value like initial value so we can well reset it okay that was bad and roll so in roll we will uh, define values of dices uh, one sec let me write it myself so rolls the dices if uh, both dices bigger than three so four five six the player wins and balance is increased by the bet yep uh, otherwise the best the bet is lost that is reset to zero okay that's pretty long comment by the way let's make it so the code is more visible sorry sometimes i i dive too deep into the code and then i realize oh my the window of the code is so small so roll the dices if both dice is bigger than three the player wins and balance is increased otherwise the bet is lost in any case bet is reset to zero okay so github copilot will help us implement that so this is logic for rolling dices dice one dice two from one to six if both bigger than three balance is increased and otherwise it's decreased then we set bet to zero okay i think also one more thing we need to put into state is a stage of the game so um we have stage of betting and we have stage of re rolling and result yeah, yeah 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 so let's call it just result so two stages uh, we need to provide initial value betting uh -huh, uh -huh. so once we roll the state of stage changes to result because it will be defined by the end of it in any case uh, we need to yeah that's basically it after we roll we should click a button like okay I want to play one more round of the game so next yeah next is a good name reset the stage to betting Mm -hmm. okay I need to close bracket here I think this is it 
Like basically the whole game is here, the logic of it. Now, let's go to the simulator page. So let's define everything that is class page is considered a page, not a component. But everything that doesn't have plus page suffix, suffix, uh, but other name dot swelled is a component. And component is a kind of a building block of your functionality. So on the simulator page, we will build a game functionality and it will contain three components. So uh, let's address it here on the page. So first of all, we need to, to get the store here. So I'll remove everything here. I will import game store from nearby store file. Okay. Then we have balance here. So the way we can display it, dollar sign here is well, let's put it USD to avoid confusion. Uh, in the curly brackets, we can get the value of the store by saying dollar sign game store dot something. And you see all the fields or properties of the state are accessible here, but make sure it has dollar sign in front of it in your HTML. This is only related to HTML. So balance. Okay, I think we need to display bad here as well uh, under balance. So I say display bad store dot bad. Okay. Then in the main section we will have. Uh, Yeah, roll button will be there later, but first we need to have a bad button. Bad button. Okay, and let's put five dollars every time we bad five USD. I will use USD to avoid confusion with this dollar sign. Okay, you can see the syntax on click curly brackets and then there is anonymous function uh, and then inside the body of this anonymous function we called game store something uh, so this is one way to write it and it's especially useful when you have some parameter like five dollars here if you don't have parameters like roll here you can just write game store dot roll and this is a function itself already it will work just like this anonymous function okay so first stage is betting i want bet button to be like primary button primary then roll button is kind of a danger decision um, so let's call it button danger if I remember it correctly from uh, Bootstrap, let's go back to warning error. Ah, it's okay. Let's let's use warning. Danger is not the right thing. Okay, so we bet, we roll, and then it should be depending on the game stage what buttons we should show. So let's say. We show bad button only if game store stage equals uh, betting. Okay, we close if here. So once we click roll, uh, it will stop be visible because the stage will become result okay but on the result page we shouldn't show roll button if stage equals 
a result. Oh, sorry, not result. Not result. Betting. Oh, actually, it's a good place to show. Wait, then. Let me think a little bit before I confuse you. So, betting. We show bet button. We show roll button if the. Yeah, it's disabled. Oh, okay. It's disabled if uh, game store bet equals zero. Or a shorter version of what we can write it is not bad. Like it's falsy. Uh, yeah, I think with dollar sign in front it might look confusing. So I'll just use equals equals zero. So it will be disabled if bet is not yet set because we cannot roll if no betting is done. Oh, we can use this class. Yeah, let's use a class. So inside the class, we can write uh, this. One sec, I'll write first and then I'll comment it. <laughs> so inside of the class, we'll write this expression in curly bracket. What it does, it checks the, uh, the value of the bet. If it is zero, then it will return button disabled string. If it is not zero, it will return just empty string, like no class. Okay. The formatting works weird a little bit. Okay, this is better. Let's move this. Oh, formatting doesn't like. Okay, okay. This is fine. So class is defined here. Let's let's look at our game. Do we have any errors? We have an error. What's the error? Ah, uh, yeah, I think I have some some not closed bracket. Okay, and this is here. The problem is when I use GitHub Copilot and it auto-completes this code, it doesn't close brackets <laughs> for some reason. And sometimes you can run into these issues. But this is fine, it's easy to fix. Okay, refresh it here. Nice. Let's close everything not yet used. Okay, so we have the store itself with the logic. We can close it because this is done. We'll come back to it if uh, uh, if something is wrong with it. Also, I don't want to display the roll button if the stage is not, wait, if it is result. So I say if game stage not result. Well, basically it's, we only have two stages now. So not result actually equals padding. So let's put it inside this if. Okay, if stage is result, uh, we can use else. There is a special syntax for it. Else, we have result, and we have reset button to play again. Actually, it's not reset, it's next, and we'll call it next round. Okay, result. We should say if player win or they lost. Let's go back to the store for a second. So here we can define it. Um, has won. Okay, it's false by default. We define it here, has one true, has one false. 
and we only use it if stage is result otherwise it doesn't make sense so here uh, has one if has one then one otherwise well you you lost okay let's see how it is I think buttons have different styling now might be it's important to end add just button class in addition to button warning and button primary yeah okay role is disabled so let's bet our bet is five dollars let's add 15 I think we need to reduce balance yeah okay uh, then we roll and we lost so our bet is now zero again and balance mm, is 85 okay okay this is fine next round and we can bet again 25 we roll and we won and balance increased so this is a very simple game we got here we can actually wrote how much we won uh, we can add additional if here just to make code a little bit cleaner if has won we will say you won uh -huh. right. we don't we don't keep in the store how much they won so yeah let's record it that was fine okay bad 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 roll bad 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 roll i'll lose all my money in casino yeah this is how it usually works right because the chance of two dices to be bigger than uh three it's like 50% for one dice, 50% for another dice, and you multiply it, you get 25% of you to win. So, and since your money are just, yeah, your bet is returned to you, uh, you'll probably lose all your money in the end. Yeah, please don't play casinos if you don't know what you do. I don't know if it's acceptable for YouTube. We will know in a second if my channel is banned. Uh, okay, but let's summarize. We have a small game here. The only thing left is we can split it into components. So this aside thing and this thing here is a functionality for balance component. So we have balance, we have HTML, we add script section here, we need to import the store and it will work. Also if you want to use TypeScript, you just say language TS, actually it's a good thing to do from, from the start. Okay, and so that was balance. Uh, let's return the component to a side. Uh, the way you write uh, or import components is in Svelte is you import them. Balance from balance Svelte. And then you use it as a, as a tag. And you can see we haven't provided the store because we use um, a way of moving data along in the application as a store. We don't need to provide it any attributes. Um, but there is also another way if you don't want to use store and want to use uh, some inputs, you can say like balance equals games, Store 
balance and in your balance component in this way you don't need to import it but you need to write export let balance and do this uh, that will work too but I just recommend you to use stores it might be confusing in the beginning but it will pay you much more in the end okay that was balance let's see if it still works we have balance here and we, we are winning nice okay uh, dices oh we never actually show dices value I think we should show them on the on the result screen yep 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 my bad so here we'll just type dices we will import it dices from dices component okay right now it's empty and here we'll just just display what dice values are okay uh, and what is another component it's a game so game is basically these buttons okay 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 let me think what is the best way to organize buttons into component so this whole page is just balance some component and dices component yeah i think we can easily do this dices go first inside we will uh, say that they should show value only if stage is result so let's quickly do that here okay lang ts import store only if stage is result um no we just close it so everything will go inside here it is highlighted because well no it's like hey it's empty why do you write it so here we should say display or oh, to do display dices nice okay we'll do it in a second meanwhile this part which I call the game basically it's all the controlling buttons we will move into game component game 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 swelled okay again we need to import store in the script section format please okay it's all nice now uh, already include file name what is it IDE messes around or is it actually a problem Uh, yeah, it just ID. Once I restarted it, the error has gone. Okay, so the game is here. Let's try if it still works. Okay, we just need to display dices now, and that will be it. Uh, I'll call it a day. Okay, so dices. What is the best way to display them? Hmm. Now uh, let's see if GitHub Copilot uh, will suggest anything. I'll just give it additional context. Game store dice one and uh, dice two. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, it 
tips, <laughs> suggesting comments. Oh, okay, okay, okay. What if we say the class dice one? Oh, nice. It actually got got what I need. So it's an image with some URL inside for the different dices and it fits dice number into the URL. Awesome. Okay, let's do the same to the second one. Let's see if it works. Dice one, dice two. Hmm. So there are no such URL actually. Why is it so? Yeah, maybe that website, maybe these are made up URLs. We can do some URLs ourselves, or I guess there should be some pictures on this website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can actually see them. I have access to the source code of that website. So I'll, I'll cheat a little bit and I'll copy images from there. Uh, one sec. So images somewhere here should be dices. I don't know where, but somewhere. They might be inside the grab simulator. Ah, yeah, 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 I remember. They were in the top. These are thousands of lines. You see, like, what we can do in just few lines in uh, Svelte, it requires uh, a code like this. You manually operate over HTML. And it's very messy. It quickly gets out of control and you lost. Um, okay, so website, image, crap simulator. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's copy that. Website, image. Oh, it's here. How did I miss that? So I'll copy them. I'll paste it into the static here. I'll just put it into image slash dices folder. Okay, here are all the dices we need and that should work now. So should be image slash dices slash die one jpeg okay and same for die two okay let's see if it works static image dices die Hmm. Maybe I need to restart it so let's see changes in the static folder. Let's see. And not yet. Okay, let, let me think what is wrong. So let's check the path. Static image dices. Ah, it's underscore. Yes, wonderful. Okay, let's make it a row, let's get free. Nice, so let's play a game one more time. I bet half of my money and we lost because none of these dices are bigger than three. 
Let's try one more time with the rest of the money. Oh, yeah, we didn't do uh, check for if we have money to bet. Okay, uh, we can easily do that in the store and we can dis uh, disable this button if we don't have any more money. But I'll leave it for you guys to do if you want. So let's roll and we won because both dices are bigger than three. Nice. So the last thing, so we built a simple website with some static elements, some interactive elements. And next thing is how, how do we build it? So we need to get static assets to deploy to CDN, to like Fire, uh, Firebase hosting or Superbase hosting or whatever out there, maybe for sale or, or your Raspberry Pi. I don't know. So SwellKit provides uh, such things as adapters. So adapter auto is the default adapter that lets you build also backend logic. For static website, we don't need backend logic and we can use adapter static. So SwellKit adapter static. Static site generation here is the page and uh, we can install it like this. Let's quickly do that. Okay, and then here we replace this adapter auto with static. And actually there are some uh, options. These are default. We won't modify it right now. I hope default options will work for, fine. Uh, and what I want is to first to run it to check if it works as before. It should, we haven't changed anything. Yep. Uh, now I want to build it. So we can use pnpm build to compile it with bit. Okay, let's see. All roads might be fully pre-rendable, but found the following roads that are dynamic. Ah, yes, 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 yes. So we need to uh, add this line in, yeah, in the root of layout.ts. Let's do that quickly now layout.ts okay layout.ts okay so what this line do it configures swelled kit to behave as static site generator so we can we need to pre-render all the pages there are also options like server side rendering client side rendering etc Okay, let's try it again. Okay, now it is done. And uh, roadside to build folder. So if we go to build folder, we can see craps index practice simulator. Nice. And there is also pnpm preview command to run website from the build folder and see how it works. So let's see. The navigation still works. Practice simulator still works. To make sure it's not swelled running it under the hood with its magic, but it's just HTML. We can actually deploy it to some Firebase hosting. Let me see if I have anything. Uh, in mind. So pnpm install Firebase tools. No, oh, okay, we'll we'll do deploy to Firebase quickly. I'll show you. If you never done that, that's pretty simple. You need Firebase uh, account and project created. 
in console.firebase. I'll just pick one that I have. This is one from one of my previous uh, project that I just use for development purposes now. If I go to hosting, there is a link and this is a uh, this is a demo application for my uh, WebRTC upcoming tutorial. Uh, we'll get to that soon. Okay, so we'll deploy here to this URL. This is a temporary. Please don't expect it to work. I might later rewrite it with something else, but it might be live for some time here. Okay, so what we can do then is we can run pnpx firebase in it here and firebase will ask us some questions uh, uh, okay maybe not pnpx pntm firebase in it what about this we already installed it yes this is the way this is the way so we only need hosting and we use existing project. My project is called Genable and the folder that I want to deploy is called build. It's here on the left. It's single page up, it asks. No, it is not. It's multi-page up, statically generated, pre-rendered. Set up automatic builds with GitHub, actions, no, not now. Uh, file index.html already exists, overwrite, no, we, we need it as it is. Okay, so it created basic Firebase configuration. I'll show you it in a second here, Firebase JSON. It says the hosting, uh, we will deploy build folder there except these files if there are any of such files okay let's try it npm firebase deploy it might take a moment or two but usually it's quite quick and under a minute nice it is done here you can see hosting url i'll come and click from here and uh, I refresh and here we have it let's see if it still works as expected well this is just static HTML pages so and simulator works I lost okay so that was it we've gone through nothing to a working static web page with Svelte kit and deployed it to Firebase hosting Thank you very much for your attention. If you're interested to know more of Svelte Kit, of Svelte or modern technologies, please subscribe somewhere there, maybe there and more videos there. It was a pleasure for me to be with you and see you.